Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Rumi. Hello, welcome to Blind Pomegranate Tarot. I am Christine. If you are new here, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. If you're not new here, welcome back. I look forward to seeing you every single time. I hope you guys have been well. So, what are we doing today? Well, it's Sunday, which is unusual for me. I usually don't upload on a Sunday. But I was inspired during a meditation to do this reading. And if you know me, you know that I don't do love readings. But this one is going to be a little bit different, okay? This is going to be a past life love lessons reading. So what we're going to be asking for is what lesson you learned in your past life that you can apply to this life. So here's how this is going to work. As you can see down here, there are birthday candles. <laughs> thought that was very appropriate. They're different numbers though than the actual piles themselves. And here's how it's going to work. For pile one, you see that you got candle two which means I'm going to go back two lifetimes for this pile. On pile two, you have candle one, which means I'm gonna go back one lifetime. On pile three, you have candle six, which means I'm gonna go back six lifetimes. And on pile four, coincidentally, you have candle four, so we're gonna go back four lifetimes. Now this number came to me during my download meditation. I always do a meditation to download the information for each one of my pick a cards. And these are the numbers they gave me. Two, one, six, and four. I also received a couple of, uh, excuse me, four in total messages. And I've written them down on these pieces of paper. And what I'm going to do, I'm not sure which one is which, and I haven't looked at the cards yet, is I'm going to place one on each pile. So let's start here with pile one. And pile two, pile three, and pile four. And I can't wait to see how those apply. And this should be very, very, very interesting because they were very unusual and very specific. So um, we'll see how they apply. I can't wait to get started on this one. So let me tell you how uh, it might help you to figure out which pile is right for you. Now timestamps will be down below, so you can look at the numbers on the timestamps, maybe those resonate for you. Another way of doing it is maybe you can see auras, so maybe you can see an aura on one of these piles. Maybe one of these numbers, two, one, six, or four, resonate for you. Maybe the colors of the candles resonate for you. Maybe you can see the piles vibrating or moving. Maybe that helps you. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and every single time I do a pick a card, we do a little meditation. So I'm going to do that with you. And what I ask you to do is put your feet flat on the floor, put your hands in your lap with your palms up. And what this is going to do is this is going to ground you to the earth and open you to the universe. So this way you can sit back into your intuition and pick just the right one for you. Okay, so I'm going to start that with you right now. Okay, I hope that deep breath helped. Take all the time you need. If you're feeling drawn to more than one pile, you may have more than one message in here. So. Go ahead and look at that one as well. Now, if it doesn't resonate for you, well, it's either not something that you're ready to hear right now or uh, try a different pile. You never know, okay? I'm really looking forward to this. I can't wait to meet you and your past life. So, I'll see you at your reading. Bye. Hello, group one, and welcome to your reading. So, as you remember, we are doing a past life love lessons reading and you chose number two the first pile which is two lifetimes back okay so this was very interesting as you can see that I've already laid out the cards I do this for a couple of reasons first uh, if you haven't guessed if you're new here I am visually impaired legally blind and so I read a little bit differently I lay out the cards and then I run through them so that my friends who are also blind can hear and participate as well as those who can see it. 
Okay. Also, it gives me a minute to sort of sit and uh, meditate with these, especially when I'm doing a past life reading. Um, I, I ask very much for a lot of guidance. So um, I'll tell you all about that in just a second here. So I'm going to go ahead and this is your message. Like I mentioned in the intro, um, I did get some downloaded messages and I have not seen this yet. So let's see which one it is. I'm going to pull it back here so I can read it myself too. Okay. And this one says the baby passed. Now that was a, um, a message that I received. Uh, and we'll see how that this applies to this reading, but it says the baby passed. Um, what I was feeling when I got that was that there was a child who, who, uh, did not survive. But we'll go through this and see how that applies. I'm feeling very, um, ooh, I feel the pain of that one. Okay, so remember, this is two lifetimes ago, okay? So this is not current. This is nothing that you should feel sorrow for or sadness about. This was about learning lessons. And um, this was a life experience that you are no longer experiencing, okay? So... Um, when you have a past life experience, whether it's a dream or in, um, uh, let's say you've gone into past life hypnosis, you will find, and you will know that it's very much rings true for you because you feel very, very detached from this person. You literally can feel zero emotions towards this person. So that's really how you should see this, witness this. Okay. If you were, um, intuitively drawn to this pile. So when I laid out the cards, I did do a, a meditation with my hands over the cards. And what I heard was, this was a young woman who knew that she was strong, but never expressed it. Okay. She never expressed the feeling from within that she was very, very strong, but never expressed it. Okay. So I'm going to start with the first card here. And this is from Sacred Earth. Okay. Okay. And this is not necessarily or specifically this is where you came from because I, I will tell you what I'm feeling and what I was feeling during meditation about this particular lifetime specifically. And it, it, it really doesn't have to do with this location. But what is written underneath, which guided me very uh, sort of rang out to me, was the last line here that says, I can start over. Okay, that really stood out to me. I can start over. Okay, and I'm going to move on to your next card here. And this, now this card did ring very clearly to me. And it says farm. This is um, from the past life Oracle deck. And when I was reading, when I was meditating on this, uh, I got very cold from about my elbows down to my hands, which is how I was sitting like this. And I got very clearly that you were from uh, a farm family for sure but that you came from a very cold location. Okay. So wherever this was, um, you had some harsh winters. Okay. I got that very clearly. There is a message here, but we'll, we'll continue on. Okay. And then you got the she wolf unleash the wild within. So I believe very strongly that you knew that you were a strong human being on the inside but that you never expressed it on the outside. Okay. Then we got the journey and I'll get back to that because here you have the father card. There's a story here and there's a lot that I heard. So I'm going to get through it because I actually pulled from nine different decks. Okay. So that I would make sure that I got all the information that I possibly could, but we're going to continue on. And we'll move on to the next set of cards, okay? And then we'll discuss thoroughly uh, what I'm actually seeing for this all together, okay? Because it is a complete story. And then you got setting your course. Okay, so we have a couple of cards here about um, journeying and setting course. and But I'll, I will get back to that. I think that that really has more to do with um, sort of 
what your past life wants to tell you for this one. Okay. And then we got, this is from, um, it, it's an herbal deck. Okay. Um, and you have here mandrake and it says impassive. So we have a lot about journeying, a lot about moving, about um, pushing forward. And at the same time, you have impassive. I find that very interesting in this uh, particular lifetime, okay? Let's move on here. And then from uh, the Angel Love Oracle, you've got your feelings are real and worthy of exploring. I think that that was much more advice. That's an advice card as well. And we'll come back to it, okay? And then I pulled a card from uh, Soul's Journey. Now, this these cards I always take as advice cards, okay? This is an advice to you. This is the final lesson learned for a lifetime. And I always use it at the end of my reading when I do a past life reading. And this one is Worry. And let me read it to you. It says, I am learning that worry doesn't change the outcome. Okay. So very interesting. Um, in the center here is a, a, a love oracle card. We'll get to that one at the end of the little heart here. Okay. But I want to explain who she is first and foremost. I heard um, when I was meditating on this poll that she was a young woman who never married, who knew that she was strong on the inside, okay, had this nagging centered feeling of who she truly was on the inside, but never expressed it. She wanted to go on her journey of expansion of her soul, of her being, of her existence, but it was impassive. And why? She was very um, connected to her family, to where she came from, to the expectations of how life should be led and what she should be doing and how she should be living it. And because she was so um, almost bound to this life, this 3D life, this human experience, she never fully developed who she was. She never became the she-wolf. She never went on her internal journey. She never expanded. She never took herself, her core of who she was, and grew it, okay, into uh, what she was meant to do. It was impassive for her. It's very interesting. Um, the baby. The baby. I felt it's it's interesting because I had a couple of visions. One was of a very old lady uh, and the other was that she was, like I said, she never married. I think that she stayed on this family farm and lived her life as everyone else had for as long as it had been going on, that she was a caregiver to her father as, as he became elderly. I think that she was very, very attached to him. That's why she never moved on with her life. That's why she never became more than, um, why she never became all that she could have been. That she did a lot of worrying about how are we going to live? How are we going to survive? Um, it was a struggle, this life, very much. And that there was a nagging inside of her, that is for sure, a nagging inside of her that she was so much more, but she never got past it. It was impassive for her. She could never get past the responsibilities and worries of her family and taking care of her extended family and where she came from and how her family had always been. And so she never became the full human that she could have been. She never had the love that she could have had because she was locked into this world. Because, you know, 
it's how things were, right? That's how things were. It was a fight for existence. How the baby, I cannot, I cannot get it. I cannot get how this, you're going to have to give me a minute, guys. This may be a secondary story to why she was stuck. Because I don't see a mother here. I only see a father. It may very well be that. Yeah. Okay. I see it. Okay. That's why I see the father so strongly and why she was the... Okay. She had to step into that position of her mother, I think. That prob that, yeah, that the mother actually passed with the baby. And that she was never able to expand who she should have really been, who she knew on the inside that she was. Oh, goodness. The lesson that she says that she learned was worry. That worry never, ever changed the outcome of her life. It never, ever changed how things were always going to be for her. But there was a lot of worry here. There was a lot of... How are we going to survive? How will we survive this? When I first saw this farm cart, my hands and arms all the way up to my elbows went icy, icy cold. I've never had that before. So I knew that that was significant. So she was definitely from some place that was very, very cold. That would have very harsh winters. Whatever that means. Uh, wherever that location. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one. But... When I saw I can start again, I got the feeling that there may have been a point at which she, um, when her father passed and she was left to her own, that she thought she could start again, but I don't see it as happening for her. Um, I think she may have, I think she may have passed before she could do that. But that, I believe very strongly, is an additional message for you. Don't wait. Don't wait. If you feel that draw within you, that strength within you, absolutely, you need to embrace it. Her lesson is, worrying about what you cannot change will not help you. It's very interesting. So let me read you the friendship card here. Pardon me. It says, friendship, nurture the bonds of friendship within your relationship and your love and your love life will dramatically improve. So I think this is advice for you now. Nurture the love, the friendship in your, in your life now. And your love life will dramatically improve. I think there's a couple of messages here for you. Group one. If you feel the inner pull of who you really are, what she wants you to know is you need to release that. This She clearly had a journey she wanted to go on. She clearly had a path. She wanted to live but couldn't, was trapped by responsibility, by worry, by feeling the pull that she had to take care of everyone else, her family, and be there for them just so everyone could survive, but sort of gave herself up. Not sort of. She gave herself up. She did. She gave herself up in the meantime, in, in that lifetime. She gave into it. And that's her lesson for you. Do not give in to what others want for you. If you feel that strong strength, that she-wolf inside, that pull to journey into your own life, to journey into your own expansion, to journey into your own destiny. 
what she wants you to do is do exactly that. Embrace it. Do not let it become impassive. This sense of responsibility that she had. Life was definitely a struggle. That is for sure. But I think she gave up any kind of life of her own. She gave up any kind of life of her own for this. And I think that when the time finally came that she could start again, I believe it was too late for her. The advice from the universe is nurture your friendship within your romantic life. And do not worry so much, so much about things you cannot control. I feel a great sense of worry in her life. So much. So much so that it really stifled who she was. Not stifled. It, it almost snuffed out her candle. It really did. She really gave herself up. Who she was. Who she knew who she was on the inside. She knew she was strong. She knew she was. But... She gave in to responsibility for others. It may have been when the baby passed, when the mother passed with the baby, that she had to take over and be the responsible one, take care of the father and the farm and step into her mother's spot and really gave herself up completely. Completely she gave herself up. She took on the worry and the burden of it all, probably very, very young, yeah, very young and didn't, it's all she knew, it's all she knew. And whatever light was in her just dimmed and by the time she could grasp onto herself again, start anew, it was too late. For sure that is the message for you. Yeah. If you feel that burning inside that I know who I am. I know who I am. Grasp onto that. Nurture that. Feel that. Create that friendship with yourself even. Because once you can do that, once you know yourself, once you can love yourself, listen to yourself, this woman had, this young lady had, an all-encompassing knowledge of who she was. She knew she was the she-wolf. She knew she was strong on the inside. She knew who she was supposed to be, but she never embraced it. She gave it up so that she could you know, do what was expected of her. Don't do that in this life. Remember, this is your life. Worry never changed anything. Giving yourself up for others does not grow your soul. In this life, when you can do in this life what she could not do in her life, which is be authentically you, know, listen to what your inner being is telling you you truly are, then when you love yourself, when you express yourself, when you know yourself, you will draw in the right kind of love to you. The one who will also see you, who will also express you. And then you won't be impassive. You won't hold back who you're supposed to be. You won't hold back. And the person who comes along to love that person who you authentically, truly are, that you have not given up or suppressed, will be just the right person for you. That is her message to you. Worry never changed anything. Do not give up. You know who you are. She knew who she was. She knew she was the she-wolf. She knew she was strong on the inside. But she gave it up. Responsibilities for others. Don't do that to yourself in this life. Let this be the lesson that she teaches you. Be strong with who you are. Know who you are. Not just know who you are. You can feel it. I know you guys do. I can tell. You feel it on the inside who you truly are. Express who that is. Express who that is. 
Don't let responsibilities of others or expectations of others or wants of others to put that candle out. It may end up being too late when the time finally comes that you can. It was too late for her. It doesn't have to be for you. Ooh. This is definitely a story of you loving yourself, knowing yourself, expressing yourself. And in doing so, you can draw in the love that you deserve, that you're looking for in this life. I think that's beautiful. She had a difficult life so you could have what you want in this one. So you could work that out. And her advice to you is, don't worry so much. There's nothing you can do to change it. Don't worry so much. Don't live your life through the expectations of others. Set yourself free. Do not be impassive. Be the she-wolf. <laughs> that was very, very interesting. I've never had a reading like that before. She was a very unique young woman. That uh, set yourself free. Set yourself. Honor her by setting yourself free. That's the best way to go about it. You'd be surprised all the beautiful things that come your way. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that helped. I hope that resonated for you. I know it's a little specific, that's for sure, but that's generally what past life readings are. But I think the message can be shared with everyone. Don't worry. Don't worry, especially about things you cannot change. Embrace who you really truly are. And in doing so, you live your life fully. That's what she wants for you. And you'll find all the love you want. You'll find just the right one to come along when you love yourself first. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope I get to see you again next time. Bye-bye. Hello, group two. Welcome to your reading. So you chose candle number one, which means we're going to go back one lifetime. Okay. So um, let me explain if you're new here. Uh, I do my readings a little bit differently because I am legally blind, visually impaired, and I have friends that are as well. And so what I will do is I will, well, for two reasons, really. I will lay out the cards and then I will run through them individually so that those who cannot see it can hear it and participate as well. Also, this gives me an opportunity to uh, meditate on the cards so that I fully understand and get any additional downloads that I need to. So I give you the best uh, reading that I possibly can and give you the most information. So here is our uh, message that I got during download. And I... I think I know what this is. It's so interesting. I think I know what this is just by laying out the cards, but we'll see. Okay. So for you, you got the butterfly. Okay. It's exactly what I thought it was. Okay. That's very, very cool. Okay. So I'm going to put that up there and I will explain to you in just a moment what. When I heard the butterfly, I also saw a butterfly. So it's very interesting that it came out for this group. I love that when it all comes together and spirits like see we told you so okay so we'll start at the beginning and your very first card now these are from uh, sacred earth that doesn't necessarily mean that you came from uh, i guess that's avebury standing stones but i will read to you what it says underneath because that really is sort of a describer of who this person was okay or who you were one lifetime ago and it says i seek knowledge and I receive greater knowledge when I am ready, when I am ready. Greater power means greater responsibility. Now that stood out to me a great deal in this one. A greater power means greater responsibility. It is natural part of life to exclude and include discernment is necessary. So I found that very interesting and that I, I will get back to that, but that really stood out for me. Okay. And then your next card you got, now this is from past lives and it says, uh, transportation. Now, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are part of transportation and what I, I'll explain that as I see it as well. Okay. Uh, as we go on, it'll make more sense. Okay. And then you got Archangel Raphael. I think that this may have been uh, your guardian angel. This may have been a guide um, to your life. And then we got 
from the archetypal cards, we got the village. This is all going to make sense, I promise. Okay, I'm going to get back to this card. I will get back to that in just a second. And I'm going to pass on over here to the left. And you got uh, uh, medicine, medicine guidance. Hmm. Oh, medicine guardian, excuse me. It says, be open to healing information. Okay. Be open to healing information. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. We'll come back to that as well. Above that card, you got the muse. And I think that that refers to you in this lifetime. One lifetime ago. And then we got... Come back around here, please. Next to that, we have expansion. Hemp. These are um, uh, medicine cards. They're sort of um, uh, nature cards. Let's put it that way. Okay. We can get into greater detail. I'll, I will put down below the, the um, decks that I use. Like I said, I use nine different decks here. So... In the middle here, let me move your candle out of the way. You have two actual love cards, right? Because that's what we're here asking about. We are asking about what your love lessons were for your last life and what that can teach you in this one. And this one says passion, magnetic and seductive quality surrounds you at present time. Enjoy it. This one, I truly believe, is in regards to this last life. Okay, I think that this uh, sort of very much describes this person that you were. Okay, and then you received you are lovable. And I think that that is in reference to this lifetime. Okay, it, there is some connection there between the two, but uh, I will explain. So in this past life, okay, you were a manifester. You absolutely manifested anything you wanted. It came to you in a flow that was incredible. You are magical when it came to this. You can, you leaped right into absolutely everything you did. You never doubted yourself. You never doubted you could accomplish anything. You could create anything. You manifested everything that you wanted except for love. Okay. What I heard was, while I was meditating on this was, can you see that they created everything but love? Because what happened here is you were driven, okay? Driven for knowledge, driven for success. You were driven, you were a pillar of your community. You created, you manifested, you made things happen. You were a mover and a shaker. This is who you were, okay? You were the muse to other people. You could create anything. You were in line with your guardians, with your um, with your spirit guides. You knew you could create it. You could make it happen. There wasn't anything in this past life that you could not create. But at what expense? You created everything that you wanted as far as your 3D world and your manifestation and the things that could were tangible and you could hold in your hands. But love eluded you. Because you are center focused on this abundance. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that. That's who you were. You were magical in that way that you could make things happen. You made it happen. You, boy, there isn't anything here that says that you didn't, whatever you leaped into, whatever you wanted, whatever you went for, whatever knowledge you shared, you gave, you were the the one who uh, people look towards you, you are an uh, uh, inspiration to other people. My goodness, you could really make things happen. That is for sure. But the expense of that was you were so center focused, so pinpoint focused on your manifestation of that, of the tangible, that love eluded you. Now, what I pull from is the Life Journey Oracle deck when I do uh, past life readings. And I always ask, what is the most important lesson that you learned in this life? 
or what is the lesson you want to share? What is the most important thing? And you got peace. And let me read it to you. It says, I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. What this is telling me is that that's the life lesson that they want you to, to learn from your past life, okay? I do not get from this whether this is male or female. I, I don't get that part. What I get is that this is going to encompass a lot of uh, people. So I think that this uh, group two is going to be, um, there's going to be a lot of people watching this video. So what I can say is that your past life, okay, just this last life, okay, you learned how to manifest, that's for sure, that's a, that's an, a, a karmic lesson you learned how to do, but there was no balance in that, and that because of that, because you were so hyper-focused on uh, manifesting what you want, what you, what you see as, as important, money, success, um, people who respect you, and who, um, look up to you and how you can inspire other people and that's a beautiful thing because you have the muse here and uh, it talks a lot about um, knowledge and sharing knowledge and understanding and transporting knowledge this is where I get the, from transportation is that you are sharing quite a bit of your knowledge and that's a beautiful thing but you missed out you missed out in the last life so what your last life okay one life ago is telling you here is you need to find balance, okay? You need to find balance between, in this life, if you are focused too heavily on one side or the other, too heavily on I need love, or too heavily on I need uh, to manifest uh, abundance uh, financially or uh, materially in the 3D world, that uh, that karma is gonna continue to come around. So what it's asking you for here Okay, you've got the butterfly. I find that amazing because you very much transformed into this, bloomed into this beautiful butterfly. That's who you were. You are a social butterfly. You are a worldly butterfly. People looked up to you. They saw the transformation of your life. They saw how easily it came to you. I see that a lot here. It came very easily to you. I mean, this was like the core of who you were. So you had clearly worked on that karma from even other lives to manifest into this one. That's really great. That's awesome. That's what you, you know, what, why we do this, right? But there was that little bit that was lost. And that, that is the balance of, you may have thought, oh, well, maybe I'm not lovable. But your past life is telling you, yes, you are. Yes, you are magical. Absolutely. You are magical in the things that you did. Now, I did hear during meditation, I heard my guides say, some of them did find love. Some of them did. I think that's going to be for very few of you. Because the major, the major story here is that, in this past life, and we're talking one life ago, that yes, wow, you seriously manifested what you wanted and what you needed. But love was never one of them. So what it's telling you here is, in this life, find a little peace in your life. Yes, this person was a master manifester, but they were going, 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 going all the time. And there, I think, was no peace in their life. And so the lesson that they learned was to bring more peace and calm into their life, recenter and balance their life. And this way, you can bring in all aspects of life, all aspects, including love. So if you see that in yourself now, oh, I'm working so hard, I want this, I want that, I, I, I'm going to get that promotion, I'm going to move to that bigger house, I'm going to do all of those things. What are, The question is, what are you giving up in the meantime? Are you telling yourself the stories of, well, I'm not lovable right now because I don't have this yet and I don't have that yet. And when I get all of these things, then I'll start to focus on that. And what your past life is trying to tell you is, don't do that again, okay? I want more for you than that. Don't do that again. Balance out your life. Don't say, I'm going to do this first before I do this, okay? And it may very well be for some of you, don't go all for love and not for abundance and not for sharing and not for participating in life because this is so hyper-focused for you. But what they're saying to you is 
have the balance of your life. Yes, be a master manifester. That's fantastic and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and that's what the universe wants for you, but not at the loss of your soul's really true wants and that is an open loving heart and one that you can share with someone else because in fact you are lovable right now okay no need to wait no need to i have to create my whole life before i can share it with somebody else don't do that okay because you could be closing yourself off to the person who is meant to be for you okay i apologize if you can hear doggies in the background they're playing <laughs> have the peace in your life of balance through balance of both your 3d world and your love life right in the things that the nice house or the good job or the wonderful all of those things and you're manifesting those things but also be balanced enough to say you know what even if I don't have that big house even if I don't have that perfect job I'm gonna bring that love into my life I'm gonna allow it into my life now because that's how the universe wants it for me be peaceful and who you are be peaceful and where you're at right now okay so that you don't miss out on what's coming for you okay don't wait until it's too late okay accept it now have that balance be the manifester that you were once before you clearly know how to do it okay you clearly have lived that life before but don't do it by giving up on love don't wait do it now, take it now, and have it there because it's waiting for you. Okay, I think that was a really cool reading, and I'm so glad you guys got the butterfly. I was almost sure, I was so sure that was going to be it, and it was. That's, I love it when that happens. So, I hope I get to see you guys again next time. Thank you so much. If you're new here, it was very nice meeting you. If you're not new here, welcome. I, I love seeing you guys every single time, and I hope I get to see you again next time, too. Bye, guys. Hello, group three. Welcome to your reading. So remember today we are asking your past life, and we're going back six lives, what love lessons you learned in that life. So if you're new here, let me explain. I do my readings a little bit differently and that I am visually impaired, legally blind, and so I have some friends that are as well. So the cards are already laid out and I'm going to run through them all. I do this for a couple of reasons. One, so that everyone who cannot see it can hear it and participate as well. And two, it gives me a minute to um, meditate on the cards so that I get all of the information that I can share everything with you. Okay? So I've done that and we have a very interesting, very interesting life span here. And let's open up your um, message, downloaded message. Now, I'm, I don't know what this one is. The last, uh, on group two, I knew right away before I ever opened this. When I pulled out the cards, I knew right away what, what the message was going to be. And I was right. Uh, it fit perfectly. But let's see what this one is. I have a feeling I know what it is. But, yes, okay. <laughs> it's what I thought it was. The tower. Yeah, the tower. So I sort of I sort of felt that when I when I brought the cards out, I thought, oh, I bet that's what this one is. And I was right, it is the tower. So if you're familiar with tarot, um a tower moment in tarot is um, sort of the falling apart of something. And that absolutely tells it here. There's a very clear story here about that. So when I started to meditate on this, I felt very strongly that this was a male uh, energy at the time. Okay. Remember, we're going back six, six lifetimes ago, so this could be just about any time. <laughs> but uh, this is six lifetimes ago, so probably quite a while ago. Okay. And uh, I'm going to run through the cards, and then, and then I'll tell you what I've heard and, and what I see and how I feel about this and what the lesson is here. Okay. So let's start with the first one. Now, this is from the sacred earth. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is where you came from, but there is a message within the card. Okay, so let me read it to you. I'm going to pull it from back here so I can see it. Taromina. Okay, <laughs> I have actually seen this card before, and it's a little village in, in Italy. It says, I do not resist change. Change can be a creative force. I can build upon my strengths. I can build upon my strengths. I think that that's actually part of the lesson here. Okay. 
but we'll continue on. And from the past life cards, you got wisdom. Yeah. This past life for you is really trying to teach you something here. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'll, I'm going to throw this in right now before I get through all the cards. I got very strongly that you are still living this karma in this lifetime. So we're going to run through that and see what kind of advice um, Spirit has for you about it, okay? And about your higher self with, with the messages. And then you got uh, the sustainer. And that's from the archetypal cards. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. And then you got uh, protection guardian. Drop your shields. That's very, very interesting. They're different from the other piles. Okay. There was a story about what the past life was and then what not to do. Okay. But in this pile, it's very interesting. I feel like this is a life that you are reliving again and again. And it's not just a, this is what your past life was, but there's a very strong connection to this past life in your current life. And I think the message here is going to be to, ooh, it's time to let it go. But let me um, move on here, okay? And then you received Up in the Air. And this is from the Akashic Records uh, deck. Now I pulled from nine different Oracle decks, uh, to do this because I, and I usually do with my past life readings because I like to have as much information as I possibly can. Okay. I'm going to switch these cards around here. And then you got the Rose romance. Oh boy. <laughs> that really does tell a story. There's a lot about romance and love in this, a lot about love. Okay. And then you received, now I uh, always pull from this deck, it's, it's, it's a soul's journey deck. And I use them during my past life uh, readings because I, I always ask, what is the overriding message here? What is the overriding message that this lifetime would share with future lifetimes? And you got the judgment card. We'll come back to that, okay? And then I pulled two uh, love oracle cards as well. And the first one, okay, says... Deep in your heart, you already know the answers. Do what feels right. I find that very interesting, okay? And then you also received, the situation is calling for you to have faith. And uh, the card says trust. Okay. So... <sighs> I sat with this for a while and I meditated and uh, when I do, I, um, I place my hands over the cards and I can literally feel which ones are vibrating as more important in the message. I got this one very strongly, which is, um, up in the air. Okay. I felt very, uh, lost in that one. Okay. And the overall message that I'm getting from this lifetime, okay, is that this is a man very much in love, had a wife, very much, and that there was a tower moment. And what that tower moment was, which is why I am not surprised at all that this one came out as the tower. I really felt like that that was correct for this one. And so when I unfolded and saw the tower, I knew that that was right. But he lost her. Probably she passed uh, quite young. Okay, I think this man very much loved her. But what came of this was this past life of yours, this person, okay? And this could have been in any situation, any place, any time, right? Because this is a message for the collective. This is an overriding message being passed to you through this particular life because this life has a great deal of story to tell, okay? That he sustained himself with his grief that that is all he knew after that every aspect of his life every aspect of his vision of everything that went on in life love loss is all this person saw and when I was doing this when I was reading this I was getting the message that this is something that you have been carrying with you through many many lifetimes okay 
And in this lifetime, this is something that still resonates for you. It's like a thorn, okay, that has been stuck within your uh, recurring life again and again and again. And what this is asking you to do is to finally pull out that thorn, okay, from that thorny rose, okay, from that thorny rose, finally pull out that thorn because it's something that whether this is particularly how your story went or not, okay, that this is an overriding message for you if you are drawn to this pile. That this is something that you have done again and again and again. And the tower has fallen. But you keep reliving it. Because in this lifetime, this being, this soul was sustained. Okay? It was like the air that he breathed. His grief was everything. All of the personality went away. All of the goals went away, all of the wants and needs went away, and everything was sustained by grief, by this tower moment. And that's all encompassing. And because it went so deep, it has been carried, this karma has been carried on and on and on and on and on through all of these different lifetimes. Okay. And so what this is asking you to do is if you are feeling this now, if you are in this groove, okay, of grief, however that loss of love came about for you, okay? Because remember, we're talking about love here, okay? When we're talking about how that this can relate to the life that you're living now. That however uh, that looks for you, and of course does not have to be about death in any way, okay? But uh, maybe a broken heart of some kind. That what it's telling you is, do not let that become all-encompassing to you. It is time to release it. This has been going on for a very long time, okay? It's become the air that you breathe, okay? It became the air that he breathed, okay? This was a thorn. This is a thorn of a uh, broken heart thorn that has just been relived again and again and again. And if that resonates for you, that you feel that now, know that it's happened to you before and that they're asking you to let it go, okay? The judgment card. Judging every single thing that happens in your life through the lens of a broken heart is not going to help you. Okay? Not everyone is going to hurt you. If you have been had your heart broken before and that's the karma, that's the hurt, that's the uh, what's sustaining you, what they're asking you to do is remove that judgment from it. Okay? Remove the sustenance. Okay, the sustenance of the thorn, right? Okay, that love is not a pain. It isn't. It is never meant to be that. It was never meant to be that for this poor man. It was never meant to be um, hurt. It was never meant to hurt, but it did. So if it's resonating for you, that if not necessarily this was your past life, but if the experience of this gentleman was resonating for you okay because of how you're living now because of the experience you're having now what it's saying to you is to release the judgment that all or any relationship or any person who could come into your life will hurt you in the same manner okay that's the lesson to be learned here that's the one that they're trying to tell you if you were drawn to this pile that is the lesson for you, whether or not this is in particularly your past life. Now, for some of you, this absolutely is, okay? Or you had a very similar story to this gentleman. But this is the movie we're watching, okay? And this is uh, the one that is hitting home, okay? So if it's hitting home for you, that this is something that you do, okay? That you have felt this in the past, okay? That this may be something that has gone on in your past lives many, many times. And that... It's time to stop judging. Every single rose that comes along is not going to have a thorn in it that is going to hurt. And that's the story. This, That's the message here. That's the overriding message here is to stop judging every single relationship or every person that comes along as somebody who is going to hurt you because that's not the, that's not the case. Okay? There's long time burdened karmas that need to be let go of in this life. So if you were drawn to this pile, it's most certainly because you need to let go of it.
This is something that has happened for many, many lives, okay? Irregardless of whether or not this particular life is exactly about you, if you are drawn to this pile, you've had many lives in which you've done this, okay? In which you've let the grief or pain or your tower moment of love really, really cling on to you. So that's the message here. Let it go. Take an example from this poor soul who, in his grief, let it, let his grief sustain his every move, his every breathing, thinking, every thought, every action, everything just completely shut down and let that thorn just bleed him out. There's the lesson in it for you from this person. Don't do that to yourself. Not, don't judge somebody new who's going to come into your life. Don't judge the person with, that you're with right now. Don't judge them in expectation that everything is going to fall apart. It isn't. When you can release that karma, when you can release that hurt, when you can pull that thorn of pain, okay, then you can open yourself up. You can heal, okay, and then you can grow and get the love that you have coming to you. Trust that it's coming. Trust that it's there. I know that that's difficult, especially if you've been hurt in the past, but that's what this message is. This message is about letting go of that, releasing that thorn, okay? Releasing that thorn of pain. Don't let it be a sustainer for you. Don't let it sustain your every breathing moment because that is not going to help you. And I'm sure that that's not what his wife would have wanted for him. And I'm sure that's not what you want for you or what others would want for you. So very interesting message. Very, very interesting. So that even if this is not particularly your life span, okay, this gentleman's lifespan definitely had a story in it for you, a message in it for you on how to take that lesson into this life and grow and love the way you deserve. I loved that. And I loved how the message came through so clearly and how it synced up so well. Just amazing to me. I love spirit. They do magnificent work. So thank you so much for joining me on this. It was an honor to meet you. Love and light. And I hope I get to see you guys again next time. Bye. Hello, group four. Welcome to your reading. So you chose pile four, which happened to be the number four as well. So I'm going to put that right up there. And so if for those of you who are new here, let me explain. You can see that I read a little bit differently. The cards are already laid out and I do this for two reasons. One, I am legally blind and so I have a lot of friends who are as well. And so I will lay out the cards and I will go through them one at a time. So those who cannot see them uh, can listen and participate like everyone else. And two, I like to lay out the cards because then I can sit and meditate on them for a little bit so that I make sure that I am getting all the correct information and any additional information that spirit would like to share with me. So let's go through your message here. This is the last one. So I do know what it says, but, um, I will show it to you. Is that upside down? Let's see. <laughs> okay. So when I got this, it says that the husband crossed. Okay. When I got this, I also had a vision of three crosses. So, of course, I was a bit confused at that, but um, we're going to see how this applies to this reading. So it says the husband crossed. Now, that could mean that uh, he passed, but I think because I saw the three crosses that it, it definitely means something different. And I'll go through that as we go. OK, so I'm going to start at the top with the very first card that you got, and that is from uh, the sacred earth. Now doesn't necessarily mean that this is uh, where you were at the time, okay, or where you lived. Obviously, it's the North Pole, right? <laughs> but there is a message within it. So let me read that to you. So this is for uh, Magnetic North Pole. I am flexible, consistent. I am flexible, but consistent. I am magnetic. I know my purpose, my own true North. Uh, it's very interesting. I will tell you when I first started to uh, meditate on this 
uh, pile. I put my hands on the pile and I start to meditate. And what I heard from spirit was, ah, he's back again. This is definitely a male. Okay. But I feel like, um, goodness, it was almost like a warning. Ah, he's back again. I feel like this is a spirit. This is a soul that has reborn again and again and has, um, Oh, they have almost a warning about this spirit, about this soul. Okay. This now, when I say this, this is obviously not going to be everyone. Okay. Everyone's not going to have lived the same life, but there is a message in this past life. If you were drawn to this pile, that it is a message in this past life that can benefit you in this one. Okay. So it's not necessarily that this was ever your life. Okay. But that this message of this particular life uh, is there for you if you were drawn to this pile. Okay, so I'll move on. The next card you got, now this is from uh, the Past Lives uh, Oracle deck, and it's uh, Native American. I was, well, I will continue on, and I'll explain what that means in just a moment, okay? Um, and then you got uh, the Water Guardian, okay? I connect with your emotions i connect with your emotions oh okay and then you got and this is from the akashic records uh, oracle you got a uh, winged messenger connect with your emotions winged messenger and then you got uh, protection and this is Salt protection. Hmm. Okay. Then we'll go. We're going to the top right, uh, left here. And uh, it was interesting when I was pulling this uh, deck. I was um, told to, to pull two from the Akashic Records, which I did not do for any of the other groups, but for some reason I, I needed to do it for this one. Okay. And this one says. The sands of time. Okay. And then you got underneath that one is lemon. Okay, so you actually got two of these as well. It's very interesting. Lemon, which is bitterness. It's almost two different um, stories here. Okay. And then you got from the archetype deck you got the orphan and do you see how it's a snake sort of eating itself that tells me quite a bit about this story now there are two uh, romance oracle cards here and of course because this is a, a love lessons uh, reading that's why I pulled them um, this is going to apply a little bit differently for you guys though okay this says imagine all unwanted thoughts okay dissolving into light for new for new opportunities for your life creating room excuse me creating room for new opportunities in your life let me read that again Imagine all unwanted thoughts dissolving into light, creating room for new opportunities and possibilities for your life. And then you got retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world oh my goodness okay okay there's a very it's very interesting I've never had them tell me this before uh, when I heard oh he's back again uh, there he is again um, I feel like this particular soul has gone around and around and around and around and around and never uh, been a good one <laughs> now um, like I said 
This is more about the message, okay, than it is necessarily that this was you, okay? Because obviously you're not all living the same lives, right? But this particular life is a message for you, okay? Now, every time I do a past life reading, I always pull from the soul's journey. And I ask, what is the overriding message learned from that past life or should be learned? Because I don't believe that it was, but should be learned and applied to this life. And I got empathy. I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. Empathy. Now, I think that that is more about um, being an empathetic human being, okay, than anything else, okay? And that empathy, when you have empathy, you have love. And when you have love that admits to others, and when it does, it comes back to you, okay? But what I'm getting from this past life, well, remember we're going back four lives. Now this, again, this may not have been you, okay? But the message is here so that you can hear it if you were drawn to this pile. I get that this was a man who was very, very pious, okay? That he was very religious and that he infected his religious beliefs on others, okay? I think that there were some things that he did were that were not good, okay? And that he um, has been doing this for a long time and journeying through many, many lifetimes doing these sorts of things. What Spirit is trying to tell you is to learn empathy so that you do not follow in the path of this. Okay. When you learn empathy, when you know empathy and you feel empathy, real empathy. Okay. That's real love for other human beings, regardless of what their beliefs are. If they don't fall in line with yours, then you can truly know what love is and apply it to yourself. And then of course, bring love into your life. So this is not necessarily romantic love as much as it is love to the community, love to communal love to the world, pouring out love to the world. Okay. This is definitely something that this man did not do. Okay. And so the major lesson there is to be empathetic. Okay. To know, uh, what real empathy and real love is. That's the lesson here. Okay. Now, um, I feel almost two different stories here in that this one, um, where it says water guardian, okay, connecting with your emotions, that is connecting your emotions, of course, that goes along with empathy. Um, when you can, uh, it's very cancer, right? <laughs> okay. Um, when you can, uh, and, and of course the water signs are the, the cups in tarot are about your emotions. Okay. So what they're asking, it's so clear here to me, so clear that empathy is, the overriding lesson here that this particular person, this particular soul who apparently has been going around for a very long time from what spirit's telling me. Okay. Was never is never in this particular incarnation for lifetimes ago was not at all empathetic to anyone and just became venomous, poisonous, um, eating of himself, eating of his own soul, eating of those who are around him because learning empathy was never something that this person was capable of doing. And so there was a lot of bitterness. Okay. We have lemon here, a lot of bitterness and that's all on this side under this person. Okay. Um, this is more about those that, that they, it, he infected. Okay. There's a lot about protection. There's a lot about, uh, winged protection. There's a lot about protecting emotions on this side. And there's a lot about bitterness and sort of, uh, eating of your own tail. And, 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 um, um, I think that that is where, uh, the, uh, the husband, and the, the crosses, uh, and the three crosses that I saw, it comes into it. Um, this is not a slam against, uh, any kind of religion. Okay. This is, this has had got nothing to do with religion. Okay. This person is all about ego and about control and it has absolutely nothing to do with, with religion. It was hiding behind it. I think spirit has seen this, uh, particular, um, uh, existence. This is a particular, uh, being this particular soul again and again and again. And this is sort of a warning of that. Um, oh, look, he's back again. So there's a very clear message here that spirit wants everyone to know. So I don't, it doesn't matter who was drawn to this pile. This is a message for hi group four. I'm so sorry. The video cut off. I have 
Never had that happen before and I found in editing that it cut off, but I wanted to be clear. I wanted to make sure that we all understood and were on the same page. That this particular reading is not your past life, okay? This is a message for the collective. And Spirit chose this particular life to clearly help you to understand the message that they're trying to convey. Now, I've said many, many times, I don't do love readings, okay? There's a reason for that. I do what Spirit asks me to do. And sometimes my readings are very intense, okay? But I don't sugarcoat. I don't interject my own beliefs. I don't interject my own thoughts. I go with what I'm being told. And sometimes Spirit has a very specific message that they want to convey to the collective, okay? And I'm not necessarily... Uh, able to say yes or no or anything like that. It's what comes through and this is what came through for me. Okay. Their message is that they want the collective to focus more clearly on empathy. Okay. And they use the example of this past life. Okay. This is most likely not your past life. Okay. But they wanted you to understand. They want the collective humanity as a whole to understand. Okay. That they want you to follow the bliss of empathy, okay? And that that is where love lies. That is the heart and soul of love, is empathy. When you have empathy for other people, when you have empathy for yourself, that's where love comes from. That's how love grows. And because this is a love past life reading, this is how it unfolded. This is how Spirit decided to share this information. So... It was a little bit jarring to have the video end like that. I don't know why that happened. I have never had that happen before and why it ended in that particular spot. Okay. But this is obviously a past life. Okay. Something that they have seen again and again, and that they are trying to convey the message to everyone that the anecdote for this particular soul that they say, oh, there he is again that they have seen again and again. The anecdote to that is empathy. And they wanted to share that with everyone. And that's why this came up in this reading. And that's why this information came up in this reading. And that's why I heard what I heard for this particular reading. So please don't take this as this is who you once were. Okay. That's not the point here. The point here is that they have seen this particular being or way of life or entity or soul before they want you to be aware of it they want you to see that that's possible and they want you to grasp on to your empathy to understand that that's where love comes from love for yourself love for the world and then love will come back to you and it's only done through empathy through compassion through your heart chakra that this is where the answers lie okay I'm so sorry that the video cut off before I could tell you all of those things, but please understand that when, when I do a reading, okay, I'm very in tune with not just my guides. When I do a, a meditation download, I am pulling from the Akashic records. That's where I get my information for these readings. And so when I then am meditating on top of it and my spirit guides or your higher self or whoever is trying to come through and say, this is the main message here, that I am literally just the conduit for that. Okay. And so you will never find me telling you anything that is just happiness and sunshine and, and not really giving you any guidance because I take tarot very, very seriously that this is a way for me to help to communicate to you because I was given these gifts. Okay. I am a clairvoyant. I am clairsentient audience. I am a medium. I am, have some psychic abilities as well that, and I am an empath and these are all things that I was born with. Um, and so I take them very seriously because I believe that they are a gift that needs to be shared. And so this is how I do it. This is the path in which I take to do that. And so I take it very, very seriously. So when Spirit tells me these things and I share them with you, it's not to scare you. It's not to um, demean you in any way. It's not to um, drag you, supposedly, right? It's not about that. It's about sharing the information that they so desperately want everyone to know because it's what's best for you. It's how you grow. It's how you enrich your life. It's how you clear up your karma. It's how you love yourself and love the world. That's all they want for you. 
And so sometimes when I think I'm going to do a, a past life love reading with a message in it, this sort of thing pops up. Okay. And there's nothing that I can do about that. That's the message that spirit wants to share. And I am simply the conduit for that. And I'm not trying to hurt anyone or demean anyone or scare anyone. Okay. This, in fact, was a very beautiful reading because what it reminds us of is that our empathy is so important. And especially now in this world that we live in, it is so important that you are an empathetic being, that you are a light body being. You are here living this human existence so you can help to grow the universe. And that's all they want for you is the very best all the love that they have for you, they want you to know. So again, I'm so sorry that the video cut off, but I thought it was important to um, come back on here and, and share with you um, what I was seeing and how that really truly is meant for you and what they really wanted to say, okay? So that you got all of the information. I apologize for that. Love and light. Love and light, everyone. Bye-bye.